everybody today do another stress crack in a garage this is the most common repair in any house um, due to the fact the garage doors vibrate and shake these trusses so it always causes cracks in garages so you may go in your garage and look up and you may see a hairline crack so this is the process of fixing it since these were original joints here you just want to dig out the paper tape if possible. It is tedious. It does take time to dig out that tape. A lot of guys just want to say, nah, I'm not going to do that. And they just tape over it, mud over it, texture, then it re-cracks out. But you got to get that old tape out of there. Use a six-inch knife, and you're just going to have to dig at it, dig at it. It's tedious. You may want to give up, especially on this ceiling here, because it's freshly painted ceiling. I think they smeared caulking on it. So it's really stuck in there. Old ceilings, flat painted ceilings. When you try to dig out that tape, it comes right out, no problem. But you wanna dig out this. For some reason, you weren't able to get this tape out. You're gonna to have to do a V-notch technique. And I have a video on my channel showing the V-notch. So you can always V-notch, but that's worst case scenario when you V-notch. You always wanna to try to dig out the old tape. The only time you would V-notch if the cracks were going diagonal or if they were already repaired before or you're not able to get that tape seam out, then you'd have to do the V-notch technique. But you want to dig out that tape, dig out all that old paper tape, all the loose little fuzzies and stuff, get them out of there. Then you want to go through and add screws. Since this is a garage, I'm going to use 5 8 screws inch and five eighths to two inch screws regular sheetrocks half inch so use inch and a quarter inch and a half screws so in a garage use an inch and a half to two inch screws will be more than enough to really secure that sheetrock you want to add screws on each side of the joint you basically tighten up each side i like to go on the edge of the tape and then maybe take it in six inches or a foot so you really get it nice and tight. So if there's any sheetrock movement, you tighten it up with the, the screws that you put in place. A lot of jobs I repair, they look like they've been repaired before, but I noticed they never added screws. So that simple thing by adding screws will help at least tighten and secure the sheetrock. So if it is from nails or not enough screws in it that caused the original crack, that will address that issue. Of course, if there's vibration or movement, screws are not going to save this crack. That's just a structural issue that you have. Movement, framing movement, trusses moving. So that's why we just do what we can with the drywall by adding the screws. Also, since I dug out that tape, it left a groove in it. So now that, now that we have a groove in place, we can add our new tape right in that groove. Going to use a regular mesh fiberglass. I don't use paper tapes. I only use paper tapes in angles if need be. I always use just a regular mesh fiberglass for all my repairs. There's tons of different tapes out there. Just use a fiberglass mesh tape. I don't care what others say, what other they're trying to push. This product or that product, more than likely they're sponsored by a company just trying to push the newest gimmick out there just stick to a regular fiberglass mesh tape that you get at any home improvement store it's there for a reason but yeah let's get it all fiberglassed and then once we get it all fiberglassed we're going to follow through and just do a strike in we're just going to strike in that groove notch that we left from digging out the old tape and we're just going to use a five minute quick set mud of course this if this is something you're doing you would just use an all-purpose joint compound once we get it all first coated with the quick set, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick strike in with the second coat. And then I'm just gonna cross it off and just pull it tight, doing a tight third coat. This third coat's not needed. It's just I already had the mud mixed up in the pan, so I'm not gonna waste the mud, so I'm gonna use it. Once the mud's all set up, I'm just gonna get rid of the edges with a sponge. That's just called a slick out technique. This is working with hot muds. This is not working with joint compounds. Joint compounds, you would have to let dry overnight and then sand it in between coats. And the reason we do the sponging on the 
hot muds, it's basically just getting rid of the excess mud and getting rid of that edge. That's the most important part. But you notice I'm not sitting here floating out anything using a big 12 inch, 14 inch knife. I'm not trying to put a bunch of mud on. I'm just filling in the groove that we created by digging out that old tape seam. So it seems like a lot of work digging it out seems unnecessary, but you're making it really easy for yourself just to mud it in. And then when you get it all mudded out and then you follow through and texture, you're not texturing out the whole ceiling area. You're just literally texturing that little area, blends in nicely, the joint's not crowned out. So that's just the way you do it whenever, whenever you're able to dig out the tape. But yeah, pretty easy. Watch and learn. You dig out the old tape, put in the screws, fiberglass it, first coat, second coat, third coat if need be. Follow it through with whatever texture you have. Of course, where you're located, you may have a different texture, but the coating process is the same. One coat, two coats, three coats if need be. If you have a smooth texture, you would just do a tight skim coat with a joint compound. On here, it's a, just a heavy skip trowel that we're doing. So I'm using a heavy all-purpose joint compound and doing the skip trowel. But yeah, simple repair like this, get it all fixed up, stress cracks in a garage. It's a very common repair in every house. Like I said, I think it's a stress from the garage doors going up and down, people getting in the attic with the scuttle hole. So you're always going to get these stress cracks. But yeah, every house has a stress crack. I also have a whole playlist on stress crack repairs. So you see the process. We have other processes in here doing the v-notch technique also and just repairing these cracks it's the most common job i do i probably do a stress crack job every day every other day so it's real common for us to get calls come in here in this garage it was just like 21 linear foot just basically the length of the garage easy in and out job took less than a couple hours get it all repaired for them so they're able to turn around and primer and paint the next day but yeah I hope you liked the video. Just watch and learn. Like I said, I have a whole playlist just showing stress cracks like this. So after this video, you can go ahead and check out the other videos. Also, if you haven't done it already, please subscribe. Please like and please leave a comment. The subscription helps. Thank you for subscribing. But the likes and the comments are what helps YouTube find my channel. When someone looks up drywall repairs, I want them to find my channel. The channel is growing slowly but surely, but we want it to grow faster. The more I can grow this, if I can actually generate revenue from people watching commercials, I might be able to buy a new camera, better camera, better microphone, and that's just going to help you guys out. I'm putting these videos out here for you. I know how to do drywall. I do it every day. I could probably do it in my sleep. Honestly, it's boring me to do it every day so that's why i make these videos just to help you guys out out there so you guys kind of see the process and maybe you can do it yourself or maybe you see these videos and you decide to hire a professional when in doubt always hire a professional sometimes we make these look easy and everybody thinks they can go do it but yeah sure anyone could do it but by the time you buy the basic materials and supplies and tools you already probably have more involved than in it would be to just hire a professional come in and already have it completed also if you do make mistakes and you're not happy with it you're going to have to hire a professional to come redo your work so sometimes it costs more to have someone redo what you messed up so when in doubt hire a professional these are just helpful videos so you can watch and learn and see the process but thanks for subscribing thanks for viewing thanks a lot